In our own devices this week, we are going to talk not about our universe, but a new universe that's out there. Maybe you can't really see, and maybe you don't really understand. At least for some of us. With us is Arvind Nilakandan of Epic Games. Uh, Arvind, welcome to the show. Thank you, Nanda Gopal. Thanks for having me over here. And we are going to talk about a topic that suddenly you know come into the limelight, and that is metaverse. We have mm-hmm. maybe Mark Zuckerberg to. thank for making it a little bit more popular than the term is used to be but it's a very fascinating topic and it's gotten a lot of currency you know i don't know maybe that's the right term but currency during the pandemic as we were stuck at home in our homes and we wanted to live in live a second life you know to, uh, so to say you know outside our confines arvin so for a common person a really layman who is not into gaming who is not doesn't understand this how would you explain the metaverse to him Yeah, so a metaverse is, in put it in 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 blunt ways, right? It's an evolution of how users are going to be interacting with brands, with the intellectual properties or IPs, as you would call it, and even with just individuals on the internet. Now, what this allows you to do is, it'll be, and it is an evolution. So it's going to be an expansive. It's going to be a digitized communal space where you're not only watching and hanging out with friends and i mean you know, having experiences but you are also creating experiences in this metaverse as an example uh, we are seeing unreal engine and even fortnite the game where more and more people are creating experiences inside this uh, metaverse uh, when fortnite of course or other games like you know roblox or uh, uh, stuff or core or all uh, or all you know heading towards this idea of a metaverse but you're no longer just making or watching movies uh, on the internet but you're making movies in the metaverse uh, you're no longer just buying products you're designing products in the metaverse uh, you're no longer like you know um, just watching films you're actually making films collaboratively with multiple people around uh, around the world in order to create this and that's kind of what the metaverse uh, really is uh, it's it's this expansive high very realistic looking uh, or i would say more stylized looking universe where people can collaborate together so it's not something really new right we have had concepts like this like you know one thing that comes to my mind is second life you know which used to be mm-hmm. there what about about a decade back and um, and you have sims you know which all yeah. all let you sort of have a life beyond your real life right correct well exactly well it's 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 true and you know it's not as i mentioned earlier the because of the compute power that you have and because of the latency issues that used to exist uh, you know long ago during the during the days of second life you no longer have those things or it's at least the the, ga- the, the gaps are lowering and because of that you're able to get this very high fidelity environments where you're actually able to get work done so especially during pandemic times uh, we have seen filmmakers who have gotten on to this virtual world uh, like you know, um, you know uh, for for making films so you have a cinematographer you have the director you have the 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 dop and it's literally and and the actor they're all in different places around the world or around around the world really and we have the director calling the shots as he or she would in a real world set so the the lines are getting blurred between how you can make stuff you don't have to be physically present all the time now to uh, to kind of give you the, to throw back to your question of second life or sims those were places where you could hang out but the fidelity was slow the latency was extremely high uh, and you you couldn't really get work done whereas the metaverse is a place where you can get work done like you know a lot of film studios enterprises education institutes are all using the the concept of metaverse and and heading towards that uh, to to be pro- to be productive and 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 you know um, start creating stuff so i have a 10 year old at home who uses roblox to create trucks and cars and you know all sorts of things with his friends they have a you know house they have a clubhouse that they are building together but this is also the start of a generation that is you know pretty much adept at thinking beyond the real and and working in the virtual collaborating you know you know doing things so is that going to have a profound influence on our culture and everything that's happening around 
I believe so. I mean, you're all. The pandemic was a great, uh, you know, a, I would say a catalyst for the uh, for folks to adopt this idea or even to start thinking about the idea of use of of the metaverse or the idea of collaboratively getting work done on online. Uh, you are, uh, you know, an, an example of of uh, something similar that you talked about right now is we recently added Ferrari in the uh, in Fortnite. Like, and the Ferrari is not like a model of like, you know, a Ferrari, but it was literally like every piece of Ferrari that you typically see uh, in the physical world that was then bought into Fortnite and people could have an experience uh, over there uh, where you're driving the car around with all the features decked as it, as it would in the physical physical world itself. Uh, and because of the because of the catalyst of pandemic, you're seeing more and more people who are now understanding and actually being productive using these kinds of techniques that you're seeing, um, uh, like 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 what what your kid is doing right now. Like you know, get together with friends. Uh, they're not just hanging out and chatting and playing, but they are actually studying over there, uh, and they are probably like exchanging notes. Uh, they are probably building a world uh, using that, uh, which which used to which is what like you know. Uh, these are tools that are being used by architects, for example, right, to to create the worlds. Um, uh, and you have uh, and 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 possibilities are endless. So it's kind of the, the way I see it is right now. It's like the beginning of the early days of internet uh, and like how it how it used to be. But today, when you get on the internet, you don't say I'm getting onto the internet to to check my email, or you don't say you're getting onto the internet to check WhatsApp. You just do it, right? You just Get on WhatsApp, or you do. You just get on Gmail, and that's kind of how the metaverse itself is going to be. The lines are going to get blurred, and you you don't even realize that you are you are using the metaversey, um, you know, um, metaversey kind of uh, uh, technology. You're just seamlessly using it. Another example of that, which is already existing, is Google Maps. Right? It is a digital twin of the real world, and you're just using it without even realizing you're actually using a, a digital twin or a metaverse version of um, of of uh, of the internet but but you just use it right and that's kind of how we see it like it'll you won't even realize that you're in the metaverse but it'll just it'll it'll just be and that's where we are right now you spoke about how people are collaborating in uh, you know, to work uh, uh, on movies together for instance and and i remember i think it is a week back that Reed Hastings was in India and Netflix announced a platform, you know, which actually lets you do this. You also have Mark Zuckerberg announcing his version of the you know, work from the metaverse kind of a thing. So, so overall, it, it's actually entering your workspace too, right? Because that is, and, and the reality that we are all, uh, all stuck in these bubbles of our own um, and not really collaborating or, or being in that same workspace. People are trying to figure a way around it, you know, and this, entire experience of working together but virtually so is that is that the only um, only examples or are they are there more examples that are happening yeah i mean inside epic uh, we provide a host of tools that enable you to create this metaverse right so for example you have twin motion uh, which allows you to uh, easily create a world essentially uh, without having to know any coding, you just literally drag and drop stuff and then you're able to create the world. We have something called the meta human creator where you're able to add digitally realistic looking human beings uh, that, you know, and, and that they look incredible and it's absolutely free. Uh, and we also have things like reality capture where you're able to photo, use the, where you're able to use photogrammetry uh, to capture the real world objects in 3D and then bring them into the metaverse. Or you also have stuff like um, uh, Quixel mega scans, which allow you, which already does what reality capture does, but in a more professional or in a more library library kind of a fashion, where they literally go around the world taking you know photogrammetry assets of uh, of stuff including any anywhere from big mountains to even apples uh, or food items. And, the, and all of that is available for free to use inside Unreal Engine. So what we're doing in Epic Games right now is creating this kind of an ecosystem that allows for anyone to contribute into the metaverse. Uh, and that's kind of the vision that you know Tim Sweeney has and, and everyone at Epic Games itself has, is to have this more open environment where people are able to create uh, or create using tools and they are able to monetize uh, using their experiences uh, and uh, and you know 
uh, rather than you know showing something like ads that is what you typically see uh, in the internet today so this metaverse and if i can put it this way the rules of the game uh, so are people's identities going to be the same or uh, or let's say i create my own identity as as a certain uh, you know um, of course larger than life you know reality of my metaverse is that going to sort of stay across whatever environments i sort of enter or whatever games i play whatever things i do on metaverse or is it going to be like different bubbles um, you know are these metaverses going to sort of uh, interact that's a that's a really good question uh, and the reason and the reason why it's a really good question is see during the early days of the internet what was amazing was the governments essentially got together and created standards so you know uh, today what we take as granted where you're able to send email from let's say a google service into a yahoo service is something that you cannot do right now between let's say whatsapp and signal right uh because now it's becoming more walled rather than creating the standard so what what would be fantastic would be the ability to create these kind of open standards where you're able to talk between systems or between metaverses using the same identity now within epic games we are is, is exactly trying to do that where you know a lot of the uh, infrastructure that you see within uh, within epic games uh, for example all of the features that are adding into fortnite or those features are added directly inside the unreal engine so you're able to create your own version uh, with all the features that is available inside fortnite we also have create uh, we also given out the unreal uh, online services which is essentially the server side infrastructure available for free for anyone to start using it so you can uh, uh, so that you know you can you can create a experience or a metaverse that's working on let's say an android device Uh, which all which is also something that you can then use it on a xbox device or on a tablet or on a pc but i think i think you know the the, the leaders of the uh, of the i would say the consortium of the internet which is what existed we need something like that for the metaverse so that it's not just epic who is going to be giving out stuff for free and then creating standards it's a collaborative effort from all the thought leaders and all the industry leaders to come together to create this kind of interoperability between these metaverses and we are still not there yet but that would be the ideal vision that we that we uh, that we'd need because we don't want wall gardens anymore are i i would like to know is that epic games has, cre- has created this platform where people can do lots of things create stuff but when you also create uh, you know you also create the problem of ownership right so how do you how do you take care of that because is is something built into your platform which so, so if i make if i make something uh, is there a way to tag that ownership of that thing to me because that's also becoming a big deal in the metaverse right because i can own anything from a truck that i made to a piece of land technically if i from if i if i read right you know so all of that so how do you how do you build in that ownership element to the person who's created it you know is that also um, also tied a lot to um, to the entire crypto world yeah exactly so that's that's another evolution of of what's happening with the metaverse we are seeing nfts popping in and out uh, you know where folks are like you know in decentral land for example people are literally buying land for like 80 million dollars uh, to uh, to to showcase their product uh, for example right um so that again that's it's not essentially something that epic games itself is doing but it's the larger the 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 crypto and the nft community is coming together and and we have f- folks like flow or ethereum uh, who are creating this kind of tagging assets uh, in order to own own those things and of course you know you're able to do that uh, in the metaverse uh, no problem because ideally again the metaverse is 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 an open standard right so you you shouldn't just like how the internet is today you should just be able to create um, and own the things that you would uh, that you would want to tag your ownership on yeah so if i can ask you a slightly philosophical question also at the end of the day is this a new escapist avenue that people are getting because they they are a little bit tired of the actual worlds that they live in is that how the metaverse is going to evolve or is it going to be something that is parallel maybe that's something that you will you know uh, move in and out of I don't believe that you'll be able to perceive the difference. I don't think it's it's an escapist world. It's just get it's just about you getting more productive, right? Um, 
So uh, again, I'll use this example. Like you know, recently we had there was actually, in fact, I think it's all, it's available online. Like we during the pandemic, uh, and of course it has nothing to do with the pandemic, but it just happened during the pandemic, where we had a shoot in Chennai and in Hyderabad, where uh, where you know the cinematographer uh, who or the, rather the the VFX supervisor who was uh, Manoj Paramahamsa and uh, Srinivas Mohan, uh, they were sitting out of Hyderabad and Chennai. and they were able to direct a person in a mocap suit who was just sitting in his studio and they were able to uh, and then they had a led volume which is like a led screen that they had literally just set it up in in another person's apartment and then they were able to like create a movie uh, create a create a short uh, um, you know a short film using using folks who were all working remotely now the amount of money that you would save save because of this kind of a workflow is tremendous right so let's say uh you want to have someone who wants to review a shoot they don't have to fly all the way across the world in order to do that they literally just get on a virtual reality uh, environment or you know or even on their pc and they're able to do this uh kind of uh, a review or you know assessment or whatever that they want to be doing over there so i don't think it's a escapism uh, route it's more a productivity uh, direction or productivity route that you're that you're looking at Uh, similar to how we are using zencaster today or zoom uh, which was unthinkable of, of of having meetings because you typically want to have a physical meeting today you are absolutely comfortable with it because one you don't leave the comfort of your home and you save a bunch of money doing that and and it's an organic shift right and that's kind of how i see it i don't think it's a i don't think it's an escapism route it's more a it's a more a productivity route with with folks who want to adopt it almost unknowingly or i would say almost organically similar to how i mentioned the example of google maps you're unknowingly using a digital twin uh, and it's uh, and 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 you know and with with augmented reality on top of it uh, but you're just using it you don't even realize that unless you actually dissect or uh, i dissect the technology behind it so we are still in early days of putting the building blocks in place technically of uh, mm-hmm. of the metaverse um and knowing that like you know everything that we end up creating like this do uh, you know does end up having having its own challenges at some point so is it necessary uh, or or do we have an opportunity now to create it in a very principled or a structured manner so that you know we avoid a lot of all the issues that could you know crop up later on um well again uh, standards are a big thing like if we have like standards across then you are you are good uh, that's like the future but within within the near term or mid term mid term future of the metaverse of course unreal engine is playing a very important role and epic games also you know we both the same company uh playing a very important role in it uh in that you know we are creating all the tools that you are seeing including you know uh, the quixel mega scans and and uh, twin motion or reality capture or you know meta human uh, all of them are available for free for folks to start using it um and and you know and that kind of removes the entry barrier for folks to start creating this kind of metaverse there is you know you literally just get on the internet and download download these uh, these tools and in india i want to specifically talk about that is we are providing free training for anyone who wants to learn unreal engine for free uh so and in in and and on top of that we have virtual machines that we are spinning up for folks who are unable to access uh, unable to have access to machines that can either run on real engine or just you know don't have pcs so that they can use a browser based virtual machine where they have a fully loaded beefy uh machine that can uh, run on real engine and you can learn on real engine through our unreal authorized training partners uh so you uh, so that's kind of how we are opening up a lot a uh, uh, lot more of the community built uh, aspect of uh, of adding them into into the creation of the metaverse itself right now we are seeing bubbles of it uh, like you know we have a metaverse that's within enterprises like you know for example a big it service company might have might be using unreal engine for their own collaborative workflow but the eventual idea is like you know you should be able to just get on with without having to build it yourself there should be a a metaverse that you can just kind of get into securely and then able to get into uh, into being productive so if i can ask you one last question what is your most exciting aspect of the metaverse for you well exciting aspect of the metaverse is, let's see i think i think with with the direction where it's heading like you know with example like we have meta humans where you're able to create where you're able to have a a very very realistic digital looking human 
uh, the ability to just you know meet with people without without being in a rectangular screen is pretty exciting because uh, real time 3d is all about the ability to really be in 3d right uh, you're able to look around you're able to walk around someone or you're able to look at a building uh, not in a rectangular space but in a in a in a in a, uh, in a three dimensional space and with the visual fidelity that you're able to get through meta humans or through the rendering engine that you're able, that that you know for example unreal provides through uh, technologies like nanite and lumen which provides you like extremely high quality renders all all happening in real time i think the 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 lines between physical and 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 digital is going to be blurring so you no longer have to like you know physically move out of your home or you know uh, unless you really have to you can you can start creating uh, start creating and 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 start producing in this high fidelity world where you are you are literally able to not tell the difference between physical and, and real which is great so you can you know design cars drive cars design products buy products watch movies make movies and so on and so forth and that's pretty exciting for me thank you arvind uh, you know very exciting stuff and and uh, mm-hmm. and really you have given us the insight to uh, uh, to something which a lot of people are trying to understand because it's really new also uh, thanks a lot for being on the show thank you so much nandagopal it's uh, it was a pleasure chatting with you this is nandagopal uh, saying bye from our own devices we'll be back again next week with another guest Yeah, uh, you can listen to our podcast everywhere. You go for your podcast.